My dearly beloved, as you know, today is an important feast day, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, in which we reflect upon this profound dogma and mystery of our faith that there is only one God, but three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we profess our faith in the Holy Trinity every time we make the sign of the cross and say those words. And also when we pray the glory be to the Father after each decade of the rosary or whenever we pray the beautiful prayer, the glory be to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Three persons in one God. So this is a very important mystery. And this feast is a sort of completion of all of the various feast days of the liturgy that we have celebrated up to this point. However, as important as this mystery is, I would like rather to speak in today's sermon about the Sacred Heart of Jesus because today is also the first Sunday of the month of June. And the devotion to the Sacred Heart is so important and in fact, as spiritual writers say, it seems that God has saved the devotion to the Sacred Heart for the latter times. And what we mean by that is in the first 1,500 or so years of the church's life, this devotion was not known. Of course, people knew, Catholics knew of the stories in the Gospel of our Lord's forgiveness and mercy, His great love for us, and so forth. But insofar as practicing a devotion to the Sacred Heart, that did not become public in the church until just a few hundred years ago. Our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary in the 1670s. And it was only then, at about that time, that the Feast of the Sacred Heart was first established in local uh, dioceses or religious orders, and then eventually for the whole church. So it is a devotion preserved for our time, a devotion which honors the mercy and the love of our Lord. And if we think of the Sacred Heart, we look at the statue or an image of the Sacred Heart. Why do we have that symbol? Because it is the heart that is the source of our love, the center of our affections and our love. And by devotion to the Sacred Heart, we in particular reflect upon the love of God the Son, which led him, first of all, to come down into this world and unite himself to a human nature, and then our divine Lord to suffer and to die upon the cross for us. The image of the Sacred Heart has the flames coming out from the top of the heart to show us the fire, the vehemence of the love of our Lord for us. These flames are surmounted by the cross, a reminder that our Lord's love was so great that it led him to die upon the cross. And the heart is also encircled by thorns, a reminder not only of the crown of thorns put on our Lord's head during his passion, but also that his entire life was one of self-denial and of suffering, eventually culminating in his terrible passion and death. So the image of the Sacred Heart reminds us of the love of our Lord. We worship the Sacred Heart of Jesus, because just like his entire body and soul, his entire humanity is hypostatically united to the divinity, so we adore the precious blood. We adore the sacred heart. But we especially reflect through this devotion on our Lord's goodness and love. As I said, our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary in the 1670s on numerous occasions. And he asked, he begged for love. He said to her, behold this heart which has loved men so much, but is so little loved in return. And here you can see a cry of a request of our Lord to, for love, for our love. He wants to be loved more than feared. It is good that we have the fear of God. Because the fear of God, the fear of hell, the fear of God's just punishments keeps us from many sins. But it is better to serve God from love to keep his commandments because we love him rather than only to keep his commandments because we don't want to be sent to hell. It is more meritorious and more pleasing to God 
to serve him from love. And how does he get that love from us? By loving us in return. Or I should say loving us first so that we will love him in return. So our whole, our Lord's whole life and especially his passion and death are an expression of his love and an appeal for our love in return. So when we say that we have devotion to the Sacred Heart, that means we reflect upon his love and we strive to love our Lord more and more. But also the devotion to the Sacred Heart contains the idea of reparation, to make up to our Lord, to make atonement for those who do not love him, who do not serve him, who reject his gracious love. That pains us. If we love our Lord, it pains us that anyone does not love Him. And we want to bring them to our Lord's feet by our prayers and our sacrifices. And we also want to make up to our Lord for the sins by which they offend Him. To do what we can to please our Divine Lord, to appease His just wrath. And to earn graces for their conversion and their amendment, their change of life. So devotion to the Sacred Heart, these are the two main pillars, you might say. Love of our Lord and reparation.